guys uh, start, then I'll share my screen. I'm doing something a little different this time. I'm not using PowerPoint. I am. Uh, I made a website to hold the information, so that way we can people can go back to it. Fabulous. All right, the recording is started. So Elizabeth, if you want to take it away with our introduction. Well, I will turn it right over to Andrew, who is coming live from <laughs> Eastern Washington from his field and um, is going to go through a number of updates on things he's been working on over the last year. So Andrew, thank you so much for doing this and take it away. Yeah, no problem. So I'm going to share up my screen quickly. I am doing things a little differently uh, this time than I have before, kind of trying out some some new stuff. So uh, one of the changes is I'm actually presenting from the field, as you can see. Um, from one of the things that I want to chat about, I figured it was better to be able to actually show you and actually use some of the technology to be able to do the presentation today. And then also I ended up uh, making a website to hold this information in there. Um, kind of give uh, right now just kind of gives brief summaries of all the different projects that we have going on here on the farm. And uh, my goal is to be able to have additional pages with more in-depth details on it. So that way, if you're you know struggling with a problem, you can always uh, use it as a reference, use it as a starting point um and feel free to reach out to me if you see something that i did and you're like oh i found something that's way cheaper or easier i would love to hear that <laughs> um so the the website's uh www.farmproven.tech um and it just has everything that we prove out on the farm for microsoft and for all the universities that we work with with farm beats and and really anything Microsoft Azure related that we're rolling out here. Um, so if we can talk about it, it will be on the site. Um, so I just wanted to use this this time because I figure everyone's probably seen a lot of uh, slide decks and stuff like that. So um, I thought this would just be an easier way to, to share what we're doing and uh, hopefully a little more of a, a reference point for people in the future. That way you're not searching for slides. You can just go here and I'll be keeping it updated um, at a minimum of monthly uh, to be able to include new projects that we can talk about or uh, provide updates on older ones. So updates might include, you know, hey, something went wrong on this uh, solar tower, for example, and here's what I did to fix it or an update might be you know we swapped out a piece of hardware or something like that and uh, kind of letting you know what our experiences are from it so i figured this would be a much easier way to to share the information um and being that i'm also a programmer it was kind of fun to make a, a new little domain for uh, holding this stuff um so at the top of it I have our connectivity diagram, which is always changing. <laughs> um, so as of right now, my home office still connects to the cloud uh, via my wireless internet service providers uh, internet. Uh, we are actually getting fiber. They are literally pulling it through the road today as I drove up here onto the hill. Um, so that will help a lot, but I still wanna, you know, when proving out technologies, I'm going to still artificially slow down some things to make sure that works for people who don't have, who aren't lucky and have fiber to their farm. Um, but it does help when I'm collaborating with people, I can upload stuff a lot faster at a thousand megabits versus my current four. <laughs> so um, at, at the home office, I still do my drone image stitching. I have a LoRa sub edge and my intelligent edge computer. Um, I actually have a couple LoRa sub etches there um, and more than one intelligent edge computer now. So I actually use my my laptop as an intelligent edge and my small Intel Nook. If I'm having to do a very big uh, stitch of a drone image, um, I use my Nook because I loaded that thing up with a lot of RAM so it can uh, pull it all in memory and be able to stitch it to that together quickly. Um, but if I'm in the field trying to get something quickly done, 
I have it on my laptop too, so that way I can get it. And when I get back to my farm, I can just plug in the laptop and it'll start slowly uploading the data, just like it does in my other computer. Um, we connect up to the shop and from my home office, <clears> and then that streams data all the way up five miles away to right here. So this is the change. We switch from uh, going from a hill about three, two to three miles away to this one that's about five miles away. Um, there's no power up here, um, no internet up here. <laughs> so what I ended up doing was uh, I worked with Serena at Microsoft and we kind of built a diagram and put up four solar panels, 400 watt solar panels, uh, four deep cycle batteries, uh, Daptrum TV white space wide brand, wideband radio and a uh, TV white space IoT radio up here. So the the benefit of this spot, as you can see, I'm I'm high up on a hill. Uh, you can see for you know, I can see hills about 60 miles away from here. So I get like a natural tower on this spot. So I figured I can place it up here. I can reach all of my farmland with one TV white space IoT antenna up here. And so I can place stuff down south. I can place it up north and only have to worry about uh, one central uh, location for that to get funneled back to the farm. It's also pretty nice that it does. Uh, it's adjacent to another hill where we have uh, some of our issues that we want to do research on. And so I can put a camera up here and have it monitor that field. Um, so at that tower, as you can see, it will have, we have our sub edge and I apologize. It says Laura sub edge, but it's TV white space sub edge, <laughs> just a raspberry Pi. And I will have some intelligent cameras up here um, as well. Uh, the sensor stations are out in the field right now. We have four of them running on our newer firmware and we are going to be uh, hopefully up to about 24 uh by the start of august and then really for the next growing season we'll have all those 24 stations running so i'm able to uh, power cycle the uh, antenna up here remotely so that way i can conserve power especially through winter but still be able to capture data throughout the day so that's what we'll be doing through winter we'll be remotely power cycling it because you know we obviously not like you know, May, June, July, where we have ample sun, uh, you know, even on cloudy days, I my batteries are full uh, from the sun we get. And if anyone has questions, I can't really see chat, so maybe if somebody can pop up or just let me know if you have questions. So as I said on the site, the TV white space wideband connects from my shop to here. You see an image of the, the radio on the top of my shop. You can kind of see this hill. It is line of sight. Um, it doesn't have to be, but it when it is line of sight, you get much better uh, speed. And the other benefit is I did not have to precisely put these antennas up. Um, I just kind of very, <laughs> very quickly estimated a, a direction for pointing. And since it is a TV white space, the signal broadcasts well enough where it's able to grab a strong signal and I don't have to worry too much about it. Um, that was actually very nice to be able to do instead of having to, you know, do a, a point to point microwave or, or, you know, five gigahertz radio where you're having to very, very precisely aim those uh, to get it to have a strong link. Um, this one was, very easy to get up here and get running. So as you can see, I have some pictures of the tower up here. Um, and just like I talked about with the wide band and up on the top is the, the narrow band, the IOT setup. Um, the nice thing about this PVC is you don't necessarily have to have somebody who is you know an expert welder or or anything to build it it's very simple uh 
and all the parts are very easily available. The one problem I have noticed now is uh, with home building prices, conduit has gotten really expensive. <laughs> so it's not as cheap as when I built it. Uh, when I built it, I was able to build uh, the structures, uh, PVC structures for about $100 a piece. Um, I did a price check and now they're $250. Um, I did use thicker PVC so that way I could fill up more sand in the bottom and the base and it is very well weighted. Uh, we actually installed it during 30 mile an hour winds um, and it, it was quite stable. So um, that's the nice part about it. The other nice thing is it's not so heavy where, you know, it doesn't take two strong guys to lift it in. Me and my wife lifted it into the pickup. Uh, she is not necessarily a weightlifter, so uh, it is very easy to pick up put in the pickup and move to another spot if needed. Um, you know, we're trying out this location. I think it's going to be a good one. Uh, but if I want to move to another one to try it out, I can easily throw it in the back of the pickup, move it, and it takes about 15 minutes to set it, set it back up. Um, and then if this is the spot that I want, then I'll probably make a little bit more permanent structure up here for it. And uh, I'm going to still use this for proving out um, you know, items in other areas, be it, you know, connecting over TV white space to have an intelligent camera or, uh, you know, testing out private LTE, um, stuff like that. I'll be able to, you know, still utilize this mobile station quite well um, and the mobile power generation. Um, it went together pretty easily. Um, I am going to be making a page just on the the layout and diagram for building it. Um, you know, everyone has, you know, a lot of people have built some sim built similar things and I just like, you know, ours to be out there. And then if people have suggestions, you know, I'm very open to them. Um, but we have shutoffs on everything. So we are able to completely disconnect all power uh, and keep it safer, you know, disconnect the batteries, disconnect the solar panels. Uh, disconnect my data logger all separately to be able to keep things safe in the field. Um, it is actually a lot of power at 48 volts and uh, about 400 amp hours of storage. So uh, you just want to make sure that you are able to stay safe when when putting it together and moving it from spot to spot. So I am not near TV White Space IoT client because they are about five to six miles away to my north. Um, but you can see on the page, that is what it looks like. It looks just like all of my older ones. Uh, I reused the, the same enclosures, but they don't have to be those enclosures. Um, it just uses the, the TV white space chip uh, connected up to Adreno board uh, to be able to, um, you know, have access to sensors. So. Um, we just on this one have three sensors right now, but uh, you know some other ones I have you know the standard wind sensors everywhere I do my soil moisture sensors. Uh, even though for me this year that doesn't matter too much because we are very dry, so my soil moisture is just nothing. <laughs> um, but that has been like the the biggest change on our farm this year is putting this up here, being able to roll out the you know, a lot more IoT devices uh, over TV white space. And this fall, I'm going to be connecting up a bin uh, with it because I have no cell coverage at that bin. I have no internet at the bin, uh, but I can access it from the tower here. So I, I tested it the other day. I do get connectivity from the bin, so I'll be able to monitor those bins over the TV white space IOT spectrum, which will be great. Um, they're, they're not close to the house, so, you know, I do check on them, but being able to have more uh, readily available information on them will be, will be very helpful for us going forward. Um, the Intelligent Edge, uh, we are currently doing updates on it for our multi-spectral flights, but uh, I want to talk about because this year, you know, at the start it became useful 
uh, by stitching and doing in-season uh, changes to our operation, changing you know where I was going to put grass chemicals, uh, changing where I was going to be um, you know spraying on certain uh, crop protection or fertilizer. But this year, I was able to use it to really help plan my crop rotations. So I was going to do a legume this year or canola in certain fields. And we were very dry, so I was a little worried that the canola wouldn't come up well. So what I was able to do was I was able to take the drone images from last year, uh, see exactly where the, the weeds were, the grassy weeds I was wanting to control with you know, putting in canola because I can use different crop protection chemicals on that. And I was able to draw it out, uh, import it into my fertilizer machine, have one of the people who works for us fertilize with it and just tell them, hey, just, just stay where it's blue. And so he was able to fertilize. Uh, it's not a straight line at all, uh, but that's fine because we were able to break up the field into the spots that made most sense. You know, I was able to get some more peas in there where I'm able to plant them a lot deeper and usually they do a little better with drought, um, especially at the seeding time. And I was still able to put canola where I wanted to, where there were grassy weed issues. Um, it, it just was very, very valuable and was one of those moments when I was doing it was like, wow, you know, this, this is the future of, of my farm more and more I'm going to be doing this. Uh, it was it was very easy to do and it just made it uh, much more possible to farm our fields in a way that is more precise and kind of almost taking them back from huge broad acres to be able to break those up and do what crops make sense where. So um hopefully next year i'll be rolling out rtk here a lot of places in the nation have it and they're lucky uh in our area we do not because of the hills uh but i'm going to actually be putting an rtk one in this location here to be able to uh have it even more precise on where it is in the field so that way when i draw this out my fertilizer machine which will be hooked up to rtk will see it my seeder will be able to seed it and when I go to spray the crops, I will be able to have it in and it'll turn off the sprayer as it goes across the line into the other crops. So it will make it a lot less stressful on the spray operator because you'll be able to just go and you know that it's not going to spray your other crop out because you're hooked up to RTK. You'll have, you know, that centimeter accuracy. Um, hey, Andrew. Yep. <laughs> Andrew, quick question in the chat. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. OK, uh, Shang um, asked, um, and this was probably from like three minutes ago. Um, what are you referring to when you are we're talking about bins? Oh, OK, grain storage. Thank you. Yeah, Thank so you. bins are my grain storage on farm storage of our grain. Uh, we typically only store uh, wheat and canola um, depending on the years. Uh, Sometimes we'll store some of our own legumes, but usually those go straight to our processor. But I like to be able to monitor the temperature of those bins and the humidity levels in them. So that way we can know if we need to uh, run air through them to cool them down um, or warm them up uh, to make sure that the crop doesn't spoil. That makes sense. Great, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, the Intelligent Edge, as I said, this year got very very helpful from data that i collected last year um this year i'm making sure in july which is kind of the best time to see any weeds that come up in early july um that's when the weeds are the biggest uh and usually the crops are the largest in our area um i'm gonna make sure that we have 100 percent coverage on all of our fields last year i kind of did it on fields where i thought there were issues because it does take an investment of time but uh it paid off so well that I'm I'm definitely going to be doing it on every single acre this year. So that's going to be a lot of drone flights over 8,500 acres, but uh, it proved very valuable uh, going forward to the next year. Um, and then I was also using it to uh, the drone image there is 
a spot where we did a uh, little bit of uh, no-till and uh, where we have uh, WSU crop trials. Um, and it's very helpful to monitor it through the year. I did that last year on a pea field as well. And this year we also have some cover crops that we grew, uh, that we um, killed out and then planted spring wheat on. And so I'm comparing that field to one right next to it to see how the cover crop helped it. In our area, it's a little more, it's a lot less common to do cover crops because we are a little drier um, and but we typically get enough moisture where we don't do summer follow right where I am. So what I did was I seeded the cover crop in the fall. I did kill it in the spring, um, but it actually seems so far like the growth in that field is better. So I'm uh, working with WSU to try to see if we can figure out, OK, why what was the benefit to this field versus the other one? And as I did last year, I did even more of this year. I was able to take the drone flights, uh, imaging flights, and have it inform me on my drone spraying flights uh, throughout the field. So that way, uh, certain fields, we didn't have to spray all the fields with certain uh crop protection chemicals say for grasses because there are only grasses in certain areas you know a few a few lower spots or spots that are typically a little wetter and i was able to take the drone out and just spray those areas but the drone flight informed me which areas it was and i knew how many acres it was for before i went out to the field so that way i didn't make a solution mix that was too much because when you make a solution mix that is for more acres either you have to keep spraying it out in which case you know sometimes it can set your crop back a little bit or you have to figure out a way to dispose of it properly um, both of which I prefer not to do so if I can have it exact <laughs> I I very much prefer that um, the other items I have on the the page here um, so we are rolling out the NCSU stress cam. There's been some issues. My Wi-Fi does not like Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi, um, but we will be hooking it up in, in, in different ways to be able to get those actually working here soon. Um, and then the WSU crop cameras, they came and installed them uh, last week um, and then are going to be installing a few more to uh, tomorrow on the farm. Um, I'd love to for these pages to either link to their own project page or to help, you know, at least show how we're doing it on our farm. But uh, the WSU crop camera has multispectral and then it has a reference panel uh, within the view so that way it can, you know, you can have calibrated images of the of the crop canopy. And then we have our WSU variety trials. Uh, it's in our, my field that I basically have a lot of different trials going on this year uh, for spring wheat. And I also have them for fall wheat this year. Uh, we keep doing this every year on our farm. Uh, research in uh, varieties and breeding of uh, crops is very important uh, for us going forward. And so I definitely want to make sure that you know, we always support that on our farm um, and and kind of keep it going forward. Um, the, the varieties have definitely helped a lot um, to help with inclement weather or diseases that we get. And, um, and it's just something that I want to really make sure that we help support and keep going on our farm. Uh, so this year they just have the two trials. Um, I wish that we could uh, start back up the legume trials for uh, lentils, peas, and garbanzo beans. Um, but um, that's they're having funding issues with those, but hopefully we can get those back up in the future. But uh, anyways, I was going to kind of stop my normal presentation and actually take the camera and show some of the solar 
uh, stuff if everyone is interested or if there are questions, feel free to let me know. Um, I'm looking on here. So the, the camera specifications, um, I don't know the full specs, but they could definitely present at an upcoming uh, Farm Beats meetup. Um, I, what I do know is it does run off of Raspberry Pi. Um, they have two cameras there um, that are plugged into it, and then uh, they are pointed so it can see the crop and the reflected reflectance panels so that way it knows uh, you know we can actually calibrate the images. Um, I'm very excited about that and the stress cam. I think both of those are going to be very useful tools for farmers to be able to basically do a virtual walk around of your farm every day without you know spending hours driving to every field and getting out and looking at the crop. It'll just be kind of like an early warning indicator I see it you know, becoming for a farm. And especially if we can connect it over TV white space IOT, you know, I could have it where my soil moisture sensors are and CO2 and wind, um, you know, and then it's just gonna make a, a much more robust system for the farmer to be able to manage their farm. Um, if you can catch rust earlier, which is a uh, fungicide or a fungus that we have issues with, uh, the earlier you can catch it, the better you can plan out when to spray it. Um, and being able to, you know, see any other diseases or pests um, earlier on. Uh, it's kind of always the earlier the better, because sometimes when you're driving around to fields, uh, you know, you don't have time. If you were to drive around every day to every field and hop out, you wouldn't be able to actually do anything else. <laughs> so one, uh, you know, one of the nice things with this is you could identify issues before you see it in the field when just driving by um, because it will be a little closer up image. It'll have multispectral data so you can hopefully address the issue before the plant health starts deteriorating. Um, that's something that I always try to do is make sure that you know we address our crop issues before they start having issues with you know be it rust or aphid or or any other pests that we may have. So I'm going to move my oops, sorry. Move my camera here and hopefully we can all see it. I'm trying to get away where I can actually see it. Maybe I'll stop sharing my screen here. Okay. So this is uh, the tower that we have. Way up top is the uh, IOT, which is just a CD antenna to be able to output the frequencies. And then what I did down below was I actually used RV boxes because they are quite rugged and quite cheap to store all of our batteries in. Um, we can easily pick them up, set them in the pickup and go. And I actually just used a dual box. Um, my rock uh, for it is in my shop, but uh, we have a dual box all of the actual equipment in there and the everything. Uh, we have a grounding pole that is behind it that we're able to stick in and get all of our equipment grounded. Um, you are up on a hill, so there could be uh, lightning, but uh, that's kind of how we did our setup here to be able to make it easy to move. Um, and easy to work on. I can easily take the tops off. We're out in the middle of a field. I'm not concerned about people messing with it. If I were, I would have picked the metal enclosure uh, that we could lock, but uh, it's quite diff difficult to get up here. Um, and to be honest, most people who would do anything with this, uh, you know, wouldn't know what to do with this equipment anyways. <laughs> um, the TV white space, uh, adaptive radio is the one that I actually uh, already had for our other connection. Um, it was more expensive at the time, but I do know prices have gone down and there are other providers other than just adaptive now. Um, so the the TV white space wideband um, was 
I think their costs are getting pretty competitive to where I, where it's around. I think a hundred dollars a radio um, was one spec that I, that I think I saw uh, last week. Um, uh oh, are people not seeing any video? So I can see the video. You were breaking up a little bit on the audio, but you sound good now. It was just as you were moving around, the audio was breaking up. So, um, Hakeem, are you seeing video? Now, can you hear me? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, I can uh, see his initials, but I can't see any video. No, I see video now. Okay. okay. Teams will do that sometimes, depending on your download. Uh, it will I prioritize can... voice over video. <laughs> I just spotlighted oh. Andrew. I don't know if that helps, <clears throat> but it makes his video larger <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> OK, good. Phoebe's right. got a thumbs up. Hopefully everyone can see the, the solar panels and Andrew standing next to them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so um, the one uh, piece that isn't out here is a riser for the box, so that way it's off of the, off of the crop ground. Um, but uh, it was very quick to deploy. We got it all set up within 15 minutes. Um, me and one other person is all it took. Uh, basically, we just take it out of the out of the back of the truck and connect up the batteries and um, and plugged in two Ethernet cables was all it took. <laughs> so it was very easy. Um, the TV white space IoT is uh, still kind of a research item, um, but I do know that uh, we are working with universities. If you're interested in using them to be able to get you a IoT um, antenna to try to build, you know, IoT sensors uh, to connect over them. Uh, and, you know, feel free to reach out to me if you want to try something out on our farm with it. Uh, since I already have the base station set up, um, you know, if you want to do like a bigger uh, real world scenario. Um, but it, the IoT is a very slow speed. Um, it's definitely made for, you know, just uh, data that's coming in slowly. So either weather data, it can send an image over it, um, but not like a, you know, a live feed. Um, more of something where it takes an image, you know, every hour or two, um, something like that uh, is much more where it's geared towards. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I out here on the farm this year, and uh, I'm very excited to keep trying out new things like this, and you know, hopefully in the future. Uh, getting some better connectivity with uh, private LTE and such out here where, you know, even with my phone, I can get good, good connections. Um, the TV white space has been, has been great for connecting um, this tower and connecting up the IOT devices. Um, but yeah, so look, make sure to, to look for the page. I'll make sure I post the address in the chat um, and I'll be updating it. Uh, with all the projects that we have and and getting more and more information on there to to kind of just be a highlight and uh, and if there's something that you would like to see on there definitely let me know and it's something that I can probably you know do a write up on or um, or at least have a quick call on uh, to be able to get more information to you. So that's about all that I have. If uh, anybody else has any questions. Um, feel free to let me know. But uh, yeah, thank you for coming to the middle of my field from all over the US. And uh, I'm glad that we actually had the weather to make it work today. We are on a high hill, so usually it's really, really windy up here. <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed so. you aren't picking up more wind. You sound great. Um, so thank you so much, Andrew. This was really fantastic. Uh, and I'm just checking the chat to see if there's any questions um, or if you want to just take come off mute and uh, can ask Andrew questions or if you have ideas or thoughts, um, please jump in. Yeah. 
I have a question. Um, one, there was a question about cost. I don't, I don't remember hearing the answer. Um, you know, the cost of like the TV white space setup and whatnot. The other question though is uh, expertise. So it was 15 minutes for you to set up. Um, we actually here at Cornell set up TV white space. And it took us a team of, <laughs> a set, you know, our IT folks and people at Six Harmonics, and you know, it was it was quite the investment of people and, and expertise. Today. But it's not in the middle of the field, you know, with batteries and solar panels um, mm -hmm. on the edge of the building. But do you imagine? Um, I guess a service. There was a, maybe Phoebe. I don't remember, but Stephen had sent out an email. Uh, of the name of a company that is setting up a service like this that allows networking in the middle of a field. But do you imagine that this would need to be a service to help people out? To the TV um, yeah, for the average farmer, I mean, definitely like the Adaptrum is not necessarily the most user friendly. After you get it set up the first time, then it's easy to move it. Um, I was meaning more set up of like uh, getting everything positioned and stuff. Um, the initial setup of the adaptrum took a little bit longer. Um, the newer TV white space uh, setup is a lot more automatic than mine. Uh, mine, I have to do a signal scan and and set it based off of that, and then you know report my location and and everything like that. Um, the new ones automatically do that, uh, so they they do seem a little more user friendly. This is just like a very early version of you know TV white space. Uh, broadband device um, but the, the other part of it is um, you know there are some companies that are providing other connectivity options um, and supposedly in the future Starlink is going to be allowing uh, connections not from a home address and that's something that I think would work actually pretty well out here I've talked to a couple of people uh, who had pretty good things to say about being able to use Starlink. And then the, I would actually probably use it differently. I'd probably still have TV white space up here, but I would use it as a base station up here connected to Starlink. There are definitely benefits of this being on my home network. I can access all the devices and only and limit just a few of them to the internet. But, uh, but you know, in terms of ease of use and being able to just set it out anywhere, you know, I think satellite and then using the the TV white space for connection down to other items on the field might make a lot more sense. And then in terms of cost, um, yeah, it from what I've seen, it's it's always changing, but they have gone down quite a bit um, in cost versus the the initial ones that I got. But I'm not going to be the best one to to talk about what the <laughs> system costs are. Yeah, so Hakeem, that has been coming down. I'm happy to talk more about that as well. So this, uh, when we had sent this to Andrew, it was a few years back, right, Andrew? This was like two yeah. years back. Yeah, this is, yeah. the prices have come down quite a bit. And then for the um, TV white space radios, the antennas that I use are actually uh, really cheap CB antennas. <laughs> So uh, this antenna costs me seven dollars, um, and they yeah, they work pretty well um, for being able to uh, send and receive uh, the TB white space spectrum um, signals. And so I use that for the IoT antenna up here. Um, it's omnidirectional, and then I use that for our little IoT uh, clients. Um, I do have to get an adapter from the, you know, CB radio uh, down to the um, actual IoT radio, but that I think that might be a good thing to to take pictures of and and kind of have as a first like in depth uh, look at one of these items might be that. Um, if that's something that I think it sounds like it would be useful to quite a few people who are who are wanting to roll this out. Yeah, I think that's great. I, there are a lot of questions about the details and specifics of what parts you used and the cost and how you set it up. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be great. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah.
Any other questions? Did the question in the chat get answered about the WSU multi-spectral camera specifications? Yeah, I did not have the full specs on it. Um, it is, I can, uh, if you want to email me, andrew at nelsonwheat.com, um, I can get you in touch with them, uh, with the people who are the lead on the project. And, um, you know, they can get you the actual specifications on what they're building. Uh, right now, theirs is uh, saving it locally. Um, due to my Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi issues. Um, but uh, yeah, they definitely do have a roadmap for for what they want their project to do. And uh, and right now I, I go and grab the card, but I definitely want to have it where I don't have to grab the card in the future. All right. And I'll put well, my I email in the chat. Thank you. And thank you for the website as well. That's a great resource um, for everyone. Um, if there's any um, suggestions on topics for our next Farm Beats community meeting, please send them our way. Um, I know it's getting to the end of the semester, um, starting with the summer, so people will be busy um, getting out into the fields, um, but we'd love to hear what you're working on and updates on projects that are underway. So. We look forward to hearing from you and we will see you. Stacy, do we have next month's um, meeting set up already or we'll let people know what the summer schedule will be like? We don't have anything on the calendar yet. So if there's dates that do or don't work better, please let us know. Typically it's on a Wednesday or a Thursday at this time. So with your summer schedule, if it's changing, let us know if that does or doesn't work. And if you have suggestions for topics, like Elizabeth said, please send those our way and we'll get the calendar invite out probably in the next couple of weeks. Great. Thanks, Stacey. And thank you everyone for joining us. And thank you again, Andrew, for presenting today. This was great. Thanks. We'll see you next time. It was fun to come out here. It's like my best view that I've done presenting ever. It's much it's better than a beautiful than day. <laughs> <laughs> I may just sit up here and work the rest of the day. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Andrew. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next time.